What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Tech Tony podcast. And as usual, um, I just messed this up, and uh, when we're doing this live, fantastic. Take it, man. <laughs> now it's take recorded, it. and you guys know that we uh, we do these these videos live. As you guys know the trend, um, it's great that we do it live because a lot of clients that I deal with. Um, they don't understand that they see a finished product. Sometimes I realize that a lot of my clients see a finished product and they don't see us messing up in the product because we're the professionals. And we're like, sure. well, we have days and times too. And I'd like to introduce uh, our next guest, uh, Kyle. He is also a digital marketer. He's a little bit more uh, fancier than me because he has some pretty good blogs <laughs> that um, if you're watching my other TikTok videos, I will be referencing to to them in those videos Appreciate as it, well. <laughs> like Kyle, go ahead and introduce yourself, man. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me on, Tony. I appreciate it. Uh, so I'm Kyle Kramer. I uh, started a company a few years ago called The Website Fixer, where uh, we fix bad websites. And uh, specifically what I mean when I talk about that is we make sure that it's making that business money. Um, it doesn't matter if a website is pretty or not if it's not making you money. So that's what we really focus on. And my gosh, that is such a huge, huge problem. People, people look at websites and they're like, oh, it's a nice website. It looks good, but is it making you uh -huh. money? I right. Mean, I, I ran into one the other day where, he, where I, I audited the site and he's like, well, my wife made it. And I'm like, well, that's why it's not doing anything for you. <laughs> yes. I, I come all across all the time of just like, so, um, so how how much money have you uh, made through it uh, per month? Like on average, they're like, I, I don't, I don't know. Like most of my clients, they have a website because everyone told them you need to have a website, but nobody told them mm -hmm. why, why you need a website and, and how to have a website that's actually uh, a moneymaker as opposed to just like an expense. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, um, people will come to, well, I'm sure you and I have the same, have the same trends where we'll talk to people and like, they had their website done on Fiverr and it was like a hundred bucks. It's a WordPress site. I'm like, well, you can have a website done for a hundred bucks on Fiverr. You sure uh -huh. can. <laughs> you, yes, out. you can. Whether it's good or not, uh, that is another question. And it comes down to, to the analytics and tracking the website and exactly how much money has this site made you? Absolutely. So can I, I, I'm sorry, go for it. No, go ahead. Now, I know you have a, a, speaking of blogs and whatnot, you had a post you want to go over uh, through with this, um, yeah. this podcast, correct? Yeah. So uh, I've got, I've been messing around with this concept uh, that I call wallet words for like a while now. Like I've been messing around with it for about five years. And oh, uh, wow. What, um, what I mean when I say a wallet word is this is a, a keyword that when someone types it into Google, they have their wallet out, their credit card ready to go, and they're just looking for somebody to hire and pay. Um, like that is, if you rank for those, you will instantly increase your, your leads, you will instantly increase. And if you get traffic from those words, you will instantly improve your revenue. Do you have that, do you have that trademarked wallet words? Because I've never heard that before. Uh, it makes I, complete I'm, sense. Have you ever heard of uh, Brian Dean, uh, Backlinko? Yeah. He's, uh, I took his SEO course uh, a couple of years ago. Actually, I take it like once every year because it's, uh, it's good to just like go back to basics. But mm -hmm. he has this um, template for content that he calls the trademark technique. And yeah, it's okay. where I came up with the idea of just like, you know what? This is what I call it in my head. I should just like start calling it that. So you should uh, yeah. definitely trademark that or something. And I, um, in my industry, I use Isaac Radensky. He has a, a course that I refresh myself kind of the same almost once a year with Google ads, but yeah. um, the term wallet words, I've never heard someone say that before, <laughs> but it makes complete sense. Glad you like it. Yeah. So uh, essentially it's like a, a mixture of like search intent. So like, what is the question behind the question uh, or the term that the person is Googling? Mm -hmm. And then also, can you rank for that keyword uh, with, you know, how many links you have to your site? Um, how good your domain ranking and authority is. So what I do is I actually, um, within the article, I go through my process to finding um, the most valuable keywords. So uh, Ahrefs is my tool of choice. I, I have yep. subscriptions to both SEMrush and Ahrefs, but when it comes to keywords, it's, it's always Ahrefs. So I'll just make a whole big list of 
things that I think might be wallet words, and then I throw them into Google Sheets. And I, for years, was wanting, like, just kind of overwhelmed with the amount of data that you get out of there, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you've got clicks, monthly searches, cost per click, you've got uh, ranking difficulty. It's just like so, so many metrics. So I've really wanted to try to make like one metric where you could at a glance just kind of see like, okay, this is a keyword that one, we can probably rank for. Mm -hmm. And two, if we rank for it, we're going to make money. So what I do is I uh, multiply, um, Oh, here, let me take let me take a look at my my formula itself so I don't get it wrong because I haven't refreshed myself in a while. Um, right. If you want to screen share, you're more than welcome to. Oh sure, yeah, um, let's do that. I mean, it kind of sucks for those listening to the podcast form, but go to YouTube and you can watch the video. Plus, uh, I'll have hey. all the notes in the description down below to this podcast and on the YouTube channel. Cool. Well, there you go. Um, so this is my uh, this is the article, but. Um, right in, uh, where, are we? right here. So, uh, keyword rating is what I, uh, what I call the end of this, like very, very basic algorithm or formula. So I multiply or sorry, I divide volume of searches per month by the difficulty score from Ahrefs and then multiply that by the cost per click that they have there. Real quick. Uh, difficulty score, if you can explain that, because I don't think I've personally touched on that in any of my content. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So difficulty score is um, a number from zero to 100 that Ahrefs puts out for uh, every single keyword that they have in their database. And this is, um, it's not perfect, but it is a very good, like rough approximation of just how hard is this keyword going to be to rank for it? Uh, zero, it's like, hey, we could rank something for it tomorrow if we've got like a site with a couple of good links. Um, if it's 100, do not even try. That's like only Facebook and Google and the big boys can rank for that stuff. Just don't even try it. So um, I, for my smaller clients, I'm usually uh, anywhere between zero and about 20, 25 uh, oh. keyword difficulty. And it, this is a form of on-site SEO, correct? Uh, no. So this is, um, Ahrefs is, checking uh these keywords within google like within the uh the search uh within the search engine itself they're seeing how hard is it to rank for it okay, based okay. on uh how usually they don't really put out exactly how they come up with keyword difficulty but my thought is nope. like in the, <laughs> they sure in, don't. <laughs> in the top 10 how many uh links are going to that uh website domain and also that specific page uh that page specifically so I think that's a big part of it, but it's only a guess. No, yeah, you're very right. This part of this black box that we actually just don't understand. It's like trying to explain um, impression share to a, to a potential client. Like we, we have an idea how it works, but we really don't know how it works. Yeah, I mean, Google with their 200 <laughs> different ranking factors, I always describe Google as the, the climate. Mm -hmm. um, we, are, we are living in their world. And when they do a, a Google algorithm update, that's, that's the weather for that day. Mm, like, that's true. It's funny you mentioned uh, in your article, um, termites and pest control. It's actually uh, termite season right now here in the South. So this is yes, a very competitive. Is. Um, yeah, so this is, this is one of my longest clients, a uh, pest control company here in Phoenix. And um, we've seen some really great results uh, with uh, specifically a, an article on uh, termites in Arizona, and they went from getting zero traffic for uh, keywords with the word termite in it to uh, over 500 uh, hits per month organic, just no, no pay, just straight to their website from this article. Just by having, just, just with an article, a blog form pretty much what you're mm -hmm. talking about here. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I used wallet words for that to figure out, okay, so what are the valuable keywords that we can rank for? Because, you know, they're, they're a local pest control company. They don't have a million links to them. They've got like, you know, a couple hundred, uh, maybe mm -hmm. a thousand, but they're not going to be able to just like- Oh, did you make that animation? Oh, it's a GIF. Yeah. 
That is neat. I'm telling you, if you guys listen to this in the podcast version, you listen to you see this video format because or watch or go read this article. That's neat. Yeah. So I've got like a um I think it's called Giphy on my Mac. Um yep. and uh yeah, so I when I do a step by step walkthrough, I like to literally make it step by step. Like I used to I used to uh do uh online training for uh guys who work in mines and uh -huh. te teaching 65 year old guys who you know operate a haul truck for a living like how to log into something it like it teaches you how to like okay click on the e on your desktop that'll get you <laughs> to the internet it's like so i like to go step by step by step so like so that it is just as clear as possible so gifts are a really good thing i, I love you know, pictures and gifts and just... I've never thought of that now that you said because like I have a video series of how to set up a Google My Business profile. And one of the things I do is step one, create an email and how do you make a Gmail? You know, here's mm -hmm. how we do this. But the gift makes way more sense. I'm gonna have to start implementing that into my house. Yeah, man. Hey, I am I am I'm glad that uh that you saw that. That's um happy to you know give oh, you a little inspiration. Really caught my eye, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So here is like my um, one of my keyword uh, Google Sheets. I run so much of my business out of Google Sheets, mm, but um, me too. this it's it's incredible. Like just what you can do with this free app. It's insane. But uh, so here is um, the one for my pest control client. So we've got um, all of these different keywords that I have, you know, come across exported from hrefs over the years and i have it right now ranked by keyword rating so mm -hmm. let's see here let's rank it by volume instead um so volume is correlated to keyword rating but not exactly um the big thing here is cost per click and the reason i used it is it's like it's kind of a very good rough approximator for the actual value of that keyword. If someone is willing to pay that kind of that money on the open market, then that is worth more than a word that someone isn't going to spend that kind of money. So it's just, this is, wallet words aren't a be all end all. There is a lot of like judgment and like, it takes a little bit of practice to like be able to spot like, oh, this is a good one, mm -hmm. but it's a really good, like way to get a rough approximation of, okay, so I'm looking to do a thing on termites. So let's find out like, what are my options for termite keywords? So, you know, I'll just like filter by condition here, mm -hmm. text contains termite. And then, and now we've got some really good options. So. Well, <clears throat> the cost per click, and you make a good point there if some because someone's running google ads for this obviously and the cost per click mm -hmm. like termite frass whatever that is that's 25 dollars a click or could be in, on the google market how i have no idea what that is <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, apparently you can rank for that um but apparently but how much how much more value would that word have to if you're just getting the traffic organically you're just getting by exactly. properly blogging about it exactly yeah so there are companies out there that are paying 25 bucks 15 bucks a click and yeah, 16, my, 18, 19. That's, a, that, that, that's, kind of, that's starting to get priced, especially for our for, small businesses. For real. And if you're, and for Google ads, you only get like a one or 2% like conversion rate. Like those are that cold traffic does not convert well, even with the best landing page. So <clears throat> 2%, you remember you're talking to a Google ads guy here, 2%, buddy. <laughs> 2%. Okay. 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 So Minimum. Like, I, <laughs> which is, standard. which is why like with organic traffic, people just inherently trust the organic traffic before they trust the ads I find. So that's why I really, I focus my, uh, my attention and like all of my learning on, on SEO and trying to get like mm -hmm. clients in front of people who need their services at the right time. That makes, that makes so much sense. Um, and you've spoken like a, spoken like a true, true SEO guy. Um, I, I don't do like those of you that follow me for a while, you know, you guys know, I don't do SEO. Uh, I, I, I do it on my website, I do it for myself. I advertise for it because a lot of clients, they hear, oh, I have to do SEO, but they don't know what that entails. No idea. Um, yeah, most people have no idea. Do you use Google Search Console by, by chance when you're doing your work? It's right after Ahrefs is my number two tool. Yeah, absolutely. 
I my my Google my my Google SEO world kind of starts and ends at Search Console. I kind of keep an eye on that, maintain it. I mean, um, I do use Spy Food, but technically they're a sponsor, so you know, no, no I'm not <laughs> being one sided here. <laughs> but Spy Food. Have you Spy Food in the past? Podcast. They're good. They're good. <laughs> I love them for, for, for Google Ads because they'll pull up. I don't know what, what uh, HRF does. I haven't looked at that one. I know what SEM, SEM, uh, SEM Rush does. But I use Spyfu to help with uh, ad copy because they'll pull up, hey, these are the most popular ads in this mm-hmm. particular space, that uh, type of situation. Yeah, I don't think HRF does that um, with, with the popular ads or anything like that. So, yeah, that's, that is for your needs. That's, that's great. So once again, uh, how has this helped out your, your termite client? You said this is one of your oldest clients you've had. Yeah. Yeah. So out? here, let me, let me pull up. You that have termites console. in Phoenix, Arizona? Or is he somewhere oh, it's, else? No, we, it's, it's in Phoenix. And it, it, uh, my wife describes it as like a big uh, termite pile. Like it is, it, there are a lot of freaking wow. termites out here. Because yeah, so, here in Alabama, it's big money. Like it's, uh, the season yeah. has started. Yep. So here we go. I'm going to search by or sort by query, including termite. Now, here's the thing, folks. I've said this before. This is called Google Search Console. I've touched on several of my videos before. If you're it is incredible. Paying, yeah, if you're paying for SEO and you don't have access to this, you need to have a serious conversation with your marketer. Absolutely. freaking um, And make sure you have access and control of your hosting. That is the Every single time I talk to a client, they're like, oh, my other web guy ha- has access to the hosting. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. The <laughs> client controls it. Yes, always. And I, I always make sure. I cannot stress how many times I talk to someone. They're like, oh, yeah, we're paying so-and-so for SEO. Fantastic. Can you log into your Google search console? And they go, huh? No, they send us a pretty presentation every month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyways, that, yeah. Uh, on screen, let's what we got here, buddy. Yeah, so this is um, the last 16 months of their traffic for uh, keywords with uh, keywords with the word termite in it. So mm-hmm. uh, traffic and impressions. And uh, just bef- so from uh, November of 2019 all the way to today, and it went from like maybe one or two clicks a day for months and months and months. And then about here is when I... Uh, posted that termite article in about April of last year. You didn't and, see the difference. And it's, they went from, you know, maybe one or two per day to an average of like 10 uh, and like all the way up to like 15 or yeah. 16 uh, clicks per day. So they've got uh, like just that one article, just really, uh, I, I'm, I'm really proud of that one. That's, that's great. That's the type of growth that you love to see with the client over time. And this is the point that you, this is the, the thing you point out. I see you started, you said you started working with them in November. Uh, so like, I think I started with them in about September, October. Yeah. So like just, but it's the just gr- before this, it's not mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, we're going to do this. And then, you know, we're going to increase your click through rate by 400% in 30 days. It yeah. shows it's a long gross game. here. Yeah, it's a long-term game plan. And when, you, and when you think of it this way, if a client makes an investment and they're paying $25 a click, but they're able to get 14, 15 clicks free just or, organically, mm-hmm. um, I don't even know what, just, you know, the high end, $25, 25 times 14, that's 350 bucks they didn't have to spend that day. Right, right. That's money in the back pocket already. Uh, here, I'll, I'll, uh, one of my favorite things about Ahrefs is they have... Um, the, the, the estimated value of your organic traffic. Um, mm-hmm. So it's a great, great little metric. Um, traffic value right here. So like I started like right about here and they were getting, you know, like about 2000, 1900 bucks of uh, estimated traffic. And then now they are averaging like 7,700 bucks of traffic a month. Dang. Um, so it's like, uh, if you know, valuable words to target um and like they've been in business for a really long time but that like traffic value was basically flat for like yeah, it doesn't look like much five years and then you know all of a sudden we start targeting these valuable keywords and uh lo and behold they've got a whole bunch more value in their the traffic that's going to their website not to mention you know all the leads and stuff with the the landing page that i i built off of there what's their uh competition look like in the phoenix and this is the phoenix client you said correct yeah yeah it's i mean it's 
it's pretty, uh, pretty intense competition out here. Like, like I said, it's, uh, we're in the desert. So there are <laughs> a lot of bugs, uh, scorpions and termites, and it's just, uh, some nasty ants. There's just some, uh, a whole bunch of pest control companies out here and they're, uh, very competitive. I feel uh, my buddy explained it during termite season here, even though I work with them and help them out with, with their advertising, uh, he literally says like, dude, it just comes down to whoever gets to them first. There's yeah. a lot of people calling them and it, it's the, the first person that shows up normally, normally yep. gets the job, but there's lots of other metrics involved in here. That's just, that's money saved for the client. That's just in their back pocket. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. That, that's, a, that's, that's ridiculous. And it's a nice long-term game. So what other things uh, will you be doing for them uh, with this next year coming if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, so we are uh, we are working on um, some more of our local SEO this year. I uh, last year um, built pages for specific like within the Phoenix metro area. There are a bunch of different like cities that are all one city really, but like there are city lines. So like Glendale and Mesa, Chandler, Phoenix, Scottsdale, Tempe. Like there, you would never know unless you know there was a sign that told you, which there are, but like. I know Phoenix. I built a bunch so, of pages just for that. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're touching. They're so close. You don't know when you pass one to the other. That's, you look at the yeah. dang sign. Right. Um, right. Like that. Maybe 20, 30 years ago, they were, uh, they were separate, but it's just kind of like, I always describe it as like, if you take the density of like Manhattan and like the, the island constraining it, and then you just put it in the middle of some nothing and like just a valley. So it oozes out. <laughs> that, that's, that's Phoenix. It just kind of like keeps going, it oozes. But yeah, so we, um, we built a bunch of pages for those specific um, cities and searches that people are, are doing for those local terms. And um, yeah, we've, we've seen s- some really good uh, performance on um, near me searches. So like mm-hmm. pest control near me, kind of, that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, strong, um, strong searches. Yeah, yeah. So like if somebody's in Google Maps or like pest control near me, like in Google on their desktop, like you want to show up in that maps pack. And uh yeah, now they are. So just so everyone, everyone can hear it from another voice. How important is Google My Business to a small business? If you're not on there, you're invisible. It's just, um, it is so essential, especially for local businesses. Google My Business is what Google uses to verify and validate that your business is what it says it is and where it says it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Google algorithm will take uh, so I'm literally right now working with a, a solar company out in Massachusetts to, mm-hmm. to do their, uh, optimize their Google My Business and, and do local SEO. And um, it's Google will take the, the address that you put into Google My Business and they will send you a postcard so that they can ver- like yeah. physically verify, verify that you. you are where you are. And then the algorithm will look all across the internet and look for your name, address, phone number, and website. And the more times it sees the exact same thing in different places, the more confidence it has that, okay, this company is legit. It is still in business and uh, they are ready to do business. And if we offer them up as an option, uh, people will be happy about it. So, so one more time in the back for the people that are quite accurate hearing this, everything has to be uniformed across the web. Your Facebook page. To the T, like to the the comma. Exactly. Like, sweet. Like if you're in sweet 300, if you spell it S U I T E in one place and S T E or something like that uh, somewhere else, that's completely different to the Google algorithm. You want it to the comma. It 100% accurate. That's what I told people. It's all, it's all bug. It's all got to be you from dealing with a client right now that no one's maintaining their Google business profile. And it's not the same like any, I'm not even over exaggerating. It's not the same anywhere. I'm looking at their Facebook page to Twitter to whatever. And it was like, it's, everything's different. Like why? Yep. yep. Yeah. My pest control client was the same way when I, when I got on at first. So that was a, that was a big project for a little while. There is just finding just, I just searched all the different ways that they could potentially do their, their address so that I could mm-hmm. find these like obscure websites in the weirdest places of the internet with their like name, address, phone number on it. Like try to figure out like, Okay, how do I change this to something that's not wrong? Now, have you ever been, you end up on something like Yelp and they just don't want to work with you to change it? Oh, uh, yeah. 
Don't get me started on Yelp. Um, <laughs> nobody, nobody in the marketing world likes the Yelp. The Yelp should just get the hint, just stop. But anyway, it's I digress. <laughs> it, they're they're like the mafias. It's a uh, it's a nice little business you have there. It'd be a shame if something were to happen to it. Oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. So it's it's just um, Google My Business is just so 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 important. And if you do not have a Google My Business page, you need to do that right now. Like right, right now. That's exactly what I hope. That's exactly what people. Uh, and it's free. Doing. It's like every time I talk to somebody about this, they're like, "How much is it going to cost me a month?" I'm like, it's free, man. Google's just trying to like make sure that everybody uh, they verify the listings that they give to people. They're just trying to give the best results to every search. Yes, yes. Uh, so, can you hear me still? Yeah. Okay, because I am. On my end, I am, as we speak, uh, witnessing a malfunction. I can no longer hear myself. I can hear you, though. So we're, Okay, we're now I got you. We're going to continue this podcast along then. All right. Uh, so websites, small businesses, what are your top three things you look for? You're like, hey, you have to have this, this, and this if you're going to compete online. Because what, 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 with me, it's phone number, your address, and when they click on the address, it opens up to Google My Business. That's, those are my pet peeves that people just don't do. Sure. Uh, my big one is forms. Like if you have bad forms, like um, uh, the, the default WordPress form mm -hmm. just kills me. Like the, nobody wants to answer an essay, like enter your message here. Like nobody wants to do that. A good form can take you from zero leads per month to 15, 20, a hundred, depending on your traffic. Um, I never it's, make the uh, the fill the meshes part manager i make like name and just give me an email or a phone number and then if you want to fill anything else go over if not just hit the submit button so i use um something called convert flow that gives uh you the ability to do multi-step forms which i love because then you can ask like first name and email and like uh here i'll show you the the, the pest control site mm -hmm. um so if it pulls up here um there we go so one, uh, another big thing is you need your buttons, your calls to action need to stand out. Yep. That, is, that is number two for me. If I go to a page, I need to visually know what I need to do to get to the next step. Mm -hmm. Like if I wanna hire you, I need to be able to find that easily. Um, so I'm gonna click on that button and then it's gonna take me to um, a landing page where we got first name, last name, your email and which pest is the problem. So I've got a bunch of options to choose from. So one, my data is standardized and we can see like, oh, so like we've, uh, crickets are like a big thing that we didn't know about. Maybe we should highlight that a bit more or like nobody's uh, hiring us for term. Actually, the way I found the termites thing uh, is I noticed nobody was hiring them for termites and it led me to look into their traffic and see like nobody was going there looking for termites. So mm. I did, so now, the the number of termite clients has, has gone way way up so this also um afterwards uh so say i you know say i put that in and uh, you know bees i got bees and <laughs> now it's like okay amazing so we have a contact info but so if they don't fill this out we can still get in touch with them but so that first part just went to the client yes and so if you want he'll keep being alerts uh-huh. So there is an email in my client's uh, inbox and mine too, uh, right now saying, hey, uh, this person just filled out this form. Here's the information. Um, and then when they fill out the second form, then um, they also get that information. So it's, uh, you know, you fill out all of that and you just, and this is all information that they, they, they don't necessarily need, but they really, really, really want. And the, uh, the completion rate for this first, for the second form is like 75% because you've already d taken the first big step. You've made that decision of, okay, I'm going to give them my information. The second part, it's like, okay, well, you know, that, that makes sense. They need to know where I am. They need to call me. Okay, fine. But if you see like all of these forms right away, I'm not filling that out. Uh, no one's going to fill that out. No one's going to fill that out. So you, you need as few forms as possible up front and then have a follow-up form where you get like a whole bunch more details that maybe you need. And like, this is a, a WP plugin? Uh, so it, it's an, an embed. Uh, so oh, ConvertFlow, okay. um, I, I think it's like, it's platform agnostic. 
So um, yeah, they're just, it's like 20 bucks a month or a um, hundred bucks a month for like a, somebody like me who has uh, multiple different clients and stuff, but it's uh, it'll, it's really, really powerful to get uh, increase your conversion rate, uh, allow you to be able to contact people um, and get a whole bunch more information that you, you wouldn't have gotten before. I just thought of a client this will work for, I have one client in the, uh, in the uh, carpet cleaning industry and my gosh, he has, this form has a lot of questions on it. I keep telling him, Hey, no one's going to, nobody's going to fill this out. No, no one. one's going to fill this out. We got to yep. minimize this form, minimize this form. And this will satisfy the needs of both where I need a smaller form and he wants more information. Cause I'm like, dude, yep. as soon as they call you, you know, your girl's going to be like, great. Who are you? How do you hear about us? Blah, 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 and get the rest of the information if they need it. Right. Right. Get that name, it- get that phone number, get that email, then move on. And exactly. Make sure that you, you have a way to contact them and then get, ask all the other questions that like are really good to have. But um, if you don't have that contact information, then they're just an anonymous person who was on your website and now you know nothing about them and they never have a chance to be a, a client. Yep. They're bouncing analytics. Boing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's just uh, it, it's just a metric with no name. Nice. Nice. Kyle. It, um, if you can tell everyone how they can reach out to you, they want to learn more. Uh, where, sure, they, where, yeah. where, they, where can they find you? Yeah. Uh, so uh, the website fixer.com is my website. Um, you know, we we try to make uh, high quality content for, you know, small business owners uh, and marketers. Uh, I'm also very active on Twitter. Uh, I am a little bit of a Tesla freak. So, uh, you know, I'll just, I'll be on there talking electric cars all day. Oh. <laughs> and um, yeah, so at, at Kyle Kramer, C-R-A-M-E-R is, uh, is my Twitter and, you know, come say hi. Definitely, guys. Kyle, I appreciate you being on the show. I appreciate everything you just showed us. This is going to be like a, a multitude learning thing. If you're listening to the podcast, uh, come watch the YouTube video so you can see uh, what Kyle was talking about, what he was showing us he's been doing for his clients. Uh, other than that, guys, if anything, we'll talk to you next week and you'll have, have some happy marketing. Thanks so much for having me, Tony. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, man.